In prometaphase, something starts to happen to the nucleus. The nuclear membrane starts to break down, the nuclear envelope. So the nuclear envelope breaks down, and we've denoted this with these chunks, okay, of nuclear envelope, which allows these spindle fibers that are growing to literally start, start to, start to penetrate into the, 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 what used to be the nucleus. So in prometaphase now, We're getting, we're getting the breakdown of the nucleus, so fragments of the nuclear envelope. Look at, look at our, centriole, our, our centrosomes. They're, they're at either pole, if you will. And you have the, you have the, the chromosomes as clearly doubled uh, sets of chromatids. Interestingly enough, at this point, look what's happened. Some of the fibers have attached to the kinetochore. And so we have here, I'm going to say that this is a kinetochore, yep, kinetochore fiber, or tubule, or fiber, whatever. And here's, oh look, here's some tubules or fibers that have not attached to kinetochores. They may end up kind of important in a little bit too. So, so we have what I'm going to refer to as non-kinetochore tubules. Okay, or filaments, or, well, not filaments, or um, fibers. And, oh, there's my centrosome at either end. And then as we enter metaphase, very cool thing begins, that tug of war I showed you before. And by the time we're at metaphase, we're ready to start dividing because look what's happened, very simply. We have lined all of our chromosomes, the chromosomes are as tightly packed as they're ever gonna get, and we have lined all of our chromosomes on what is now seems to be a spindle. See, it looks kinda like a spindle, if you know what a spindle is, okay? And, and they're, or they're called spindle fibers. Some of these fibers go across the cell and don't attach to a chromosome and some are directly attached to the kinetic cores of the chromosome. And in fact, we refer to this so-called equator or this imaginary line across there where the centromeres indeed are lined up. We call that the metaphase plate, okay? So that's gonna be called the metaphase plate, that, that, that imaginary line, if you will, where they're all lined up. Well, what does this really look like? Glad you asked. Let's take a look at a cell in metaphase. How nice. There's my cell, there's my two centrosomes, there's my spindles, and there's my chromosomes lined up on the metaphase plate. Oh, beautiful. When you see this stuff through a microscope, it's downright exciting. All right, well, we're almost done because now we get to go to anaphase. In anaphase, the cell begins to pinch inward, okay? And we start to get the cleaving of the cell. And let's see what's gonna happen here. The cell begins to elongate. This is anaphase, all right? And finally, we're gonna reach something, well, eventually we'll get to a phase called telophase where we're gonna pinch that thing, but not completely apart. But let's look at anaphase. Very simply, what has begun to happen is that reeling in process I told you about. The chromosomes, like little Pac-Men, the motor molecules along the, the kinetochore, remember there's a kinetochore on each chromatid, the little Pac-Men along the kinetochore just are gonna eat their way along that fiber and look like they're getting reeled in. So if we look at it with this chromosome here, this is gonna separate and start to pull like that. Which explains, look, it explains the way I have these chromosomes arranged. Let me just show you this real quick. This is so cool, all right? To put it like I had it right there, they start to work their way in and look at the directions the chromatids point because of the forces. And indeed, that's exactly how we've drawn it for you. So the, in anaphase, they start to pull in, and then what, what's going to happen is you're literally going to start elongating the cell. The cell elongates, and that's because of the non-kinetochore microtubules that are literally, literally kind of pushing that cell. By, by pushing on the middle, the cell is going to be pushed inward. So it's elongating, okay? So the cell begins to elongate, and we finally get to telophase. Ah, but before we get to telophase, let me just show you one more thing. Let me show you what anaphase looks like in a cell. See, they start to pull inward, like so. 
And here's a later anaphase right here, but I have a close-up of that cell. Here's another early anaphase right there. But look at this cell. Let's look at this bottom cell. Look at that, how they're pulling all the way across. And now, finally, we get to telophase. And in telophase, we start to form something called the cleavage furrow. And in the cleavage furrow, the cell begins to cleave. It begins to break. And so, eh, break's not a good word. It begins to divide. And we're getting ready for the next step, the final step, which we'll talk about later, called cytokinesis. But look what starts to happen in telophase. In telophase, we're gonna start to get the reforming of the nuclear envelope, see? And that's happening right here. The nuclear envelope begins to reform. Look, the centrosomes are divided. Look, we're starting to get the division of a cell right here. Look, oh, what's that? My gosh, the nucleolus is reforming. What are we getting, you guys? We're getting a new cell. But what have you accomplished? In summary, what have you accomplished? You have taken these chromosomes and literally split them so that now no longer are they chromatids of a pair, but they are now in separate cells. One, one. And a new nucleus has formed around them. One, yeah. Trust me, a new nucleus will form around this too. A new nucleolus appears. And what can these cells do? Well, of, we're going to see next how we got to these two separate cells from that one. And that process is called cytokinesis. But look at what you've done. You've doubled, you split. The concept is there. We need the names so we can describe it.